Welcome to worship this evening for our Advent evening prayer in this fifth week of our seven week observance of Advent. As always for evening prayer and our Sunday worship, I invite you to share with me the words that are in bold throughout the liturgy and to sing along with the songs and on the Psalms, trusting that even if mine is the only voice we hear and we can't another, God hears our voices collectively when we lift them from wherever we are in prayer and praise this night. The Spirit and the Church cry out, Amen, come Lord Jesus. All those who await his appearance pray, Amen, come Lord Jesus. The whole creation pleads, Amen, come Lord Jesus. We share in our hymn of light, hymn number 561, Joyous Light of Heavenly Glory. Joyous Light of Heavenly Glory, Loving glow of God's own face, You who sing creation's story, Shine on every land and race. Now as evening falls around us, we shall raise our song to you. God of daybreak, God of shadows, come and light our hearts anew. In the stars that grace the darkness, in the blazing sun of dawn, in the light of peace and wisdom, we can hear your quiet song. Love that fills the night with wonder, love that warms the weary soul, love that bursts all chains asunder, set us free and make us whole. You who made the heavens splendor, Every dancing star of night, make us shine with gentle justice, let us each reflect your light. Mighty God of all creation, gentle Christ who lights our way, loving spirit of salvation, Lead us on to endless day. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you called light into being, and you set lights in the sky to govern night and day, in a pillar of cloud by day, and a pillar of fire by night. You led your people into freedom, enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May your word be a lamp to our feet, and a light to our path, for you are merciful, and you love your whole creation, and with all your creatures we give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. We join in our psalm for evening, Psalm 141. Let my prayer arise before you, arise before you like incense. O Lord, I call to you, come to me quickly. 
Hear my voice when I cry to you. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Let my prayer arise before you, arise before you like incense. Set a watch before my mouth, O Lord, and guard the door of my lips. Let not my heart incline to any evil thing. Let me not be occupied in wickedness with evil doers. But my eyes are turned to you, Lord God. In you I take refuge. Strip me not of my life. Let my prayer arise before you, arise before you like incense. Let us pray. Let the incense of our repentant prayer ascend before you, O God, and let your loving kindness descend upon us, that with purified hearts we may sing your praises with the church on earth and the whole heavenly host, and may glorify you forever and ever. Amen. We join in Psalm not 79, but 27, the Psalm for today. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers close in against me to devour my flesh, they, my foes and my enemies, will stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart will not fear. Though war rise up against me, my trust will not be shaken. One thing I ask of the Lord, one thing I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek God in the temple. For in the day of trouble, God will give me shelter, hide me in the hidden places of the sanctuary, and raise me high upon a rock. Even now my head is lifted up above my enemies who surround me. Therefore I will offer sacrifice in the sanctuary, sacrifices of rejoicing. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice, O Lord, when I call. Have mercy on me and answer me. My heart speaks your message. Seek my face. Your face, O Lord, I will seek. Hide not your face from me. Turn not away from your servant in anger. Cast me not away, for you have been my helper. Forsake me not, O God of my salvation. Though my father and my mother forsake me, the Lord will take me in. Teach me your way, O Lord. Lead me on a level path because of my oppressors. Subject me not to the will of my foes. For they rise up against me, false witnesses breathing violence. This I believe, that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord and be strong. Take heart and wait for the Lord.
Let us pray. Lord God, our light and our salvation, grant that your servants who seek your face in times of trouble may see your goodness in the land of the living and that we may be set safely on the rock of our faith, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Verse five, I apologize. Uh, there's a few typos in this uh, in the slideshow, but we are on to verse five. Now your manger, oh, I am sorry. Give me one second. There we go. Verse five. Now your manger shining bright, hallows night with newborn light. Night cannot this light subdue. Let our faith shine ever new. A reading from Luke chapter one. In the days of King Herod of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly order of Abijah. His wife was a descendant of Aaron and her name was Elizabeth. Both of them were righteous before God, living blamelessly according to all the commandments and regulations of the Lord. But they had no children because Elizabeth was thought to be barren and both were getting on in years. Once when he was serving as priest before God and his section was on duty, Zechariah was chosen by lot according to the custom of the priesthood to enter the sanctuary of the Lord and offer incense. Now at the time of the incense offering, the whole assembly of the people was praying outside. Then there appeared to Zechariah an angel of the Lord standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was terrified and fear overwhelmed him. But the angel said to him, do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son and you will name him John. You will have joy and gladness and many will rejoice at his birth for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He must never drink wine or strong drink. Even before his birth, he will be filled with the Holy Spirit. He will turn many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. With the spirit and power of Elijah, he will go before him to turn the hearts of parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Come, word of God. So it's always interesting to me how things work out when it comes to the lectionary, because on Sunday we heard from grown-up John, and this coming Sunday we'll hear from grown-up John, and then we get this brief glimpse in the middle of the week of John's birth story and the, the understanding that John's birth is almost as miraculous as Mary's story of conception of Jesus. That John really is this unique person in the history of salvation. His birth is one of these ones that mirrors other prophets, mirrors others throughout scripture as this answer to prayer, right? This is not the first time that someone is said to be barren, in this case, Elizabeth, but we can think back to Sarai in uh, Genesis. We can think to Hannah in Samuel. We can think of those who were thought to be barren because they had not been able to conceive and yet conceive, and that the children born to them are these special um, people among the people of God, right? Sarai births Isaac, the sort of fulfillment of God's promise to Abraham. Hannah bears Samuel, who is one of the great prophets 
uh, in the age of the kings. And then we have John who is born to Zechariah and Elizabeth in their old age when everyone was thought that they, they could not have children. And he's given a charge before he's even born. In utero, John is given this commission to be filled with the spirit and turn many of the people of Israel back to the Lord, which sounds a lot like the repentance that we heard him preach on Sunday, that he will prepare this way. He will go before the one, all of which sounds like exactly what we hear John preaching and prophesying with his own lips in the wilderness when we meet him as a grown up, which is usually the stories that we get on Sunday. The thing is, John is the last of the Old Testament prophets, if you will. John is the last prophet to come before Jesus is present in the story. He is not one to be overlooked. And what we see here is that he has this special commission. I want to go back to our theme song for the season, Savior of the Nations Come. And verse 5 uh, talks about light, right? Now your manger shining bright, hallows night with newborn light. Night cannot this light subdue. Let our faith shine ever new. And I want to uh, reflect a little bit about how John fits in even here, how this song, this beckoning to the light to come is also one that uh, is reflected in John's story. Not in Luke, but in John's version of the telling, in the beautiful prologue of John, we hear of the word in the beginning and the word being God and comes as light to lighten the darkness. And there was one named John who came to prophesy to the light. He himself was not the light, but he came to prophesy to the light, the light that lightens all people in the sight of God. And that's really what we remember this day, this, this evening, as we give thanks for the light that has now passed from this day and give thanks especially for the light of Christ who comes into our midst. We remember the ways that we too are called, like John, not to be the light, but to give thanks for the light and to point to the light, to live as reflections of that light that in us, in our proclamation, in our living, like in John's, the love and life of God, the light of Christ might be known in this world today, weary and wounded and ever darkening though it may seem, that here too we can find the light of Christ and point to it as the light which lightens all. Amen. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness. We join in Mary's Magnificat. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For you, Lord, have looked with favor on your lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. You, the Almighty, have done great things for me and holy is your name. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. You have mercy on those who fear you, 
from generation to generation. You have shown strength with your arm, and scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones, and lifting up the lowly. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. You have filled the hungry with good things, and sent the rich away empty. You have come to the aid of your servant Israel, to remember the promise of mercy, the promise made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. We join in the minor litany. In peace, let us pray. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, for all places where people gather in prayer, and for all who offer now their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord, have mercy. For the health of the creation, for abundant harvests that all may share, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord, have mercy. For public servants, the government and those who protect us, for those who work to bring peace, justice, healing and protection in this and every place, let us pray to the Lord, have mercy. For those who travel, for those who are sick and suffering, and for those who are in captivity, let us pray to the Lord, have mercy. For deliverance in the time of affliction, wrath, pandemic, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord, have mercy. For Elizabeth and Patricia, our bishops, for Brian, our dean, and all servants of the church, for this assembly and for all people who await from the Lord great and abundant mercy, let us pray to the Lord, have mercy, help save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. In giving thanks for all who have gone before us and are at rest, rejoicing in the communion of Mary, Ambrose, Lucy, and all your saints, we commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to you through Christ our Lord. And to you, O Lord. O God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, 
but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your Son. By his coming, strengthen us to serve you with purified lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. God of all, form us into a church beyond borders. When we feel stuck, amplify the prophet's word. When we are distracted by privilege, put us in the wilderness. When we need a new way, dunk us in the river. When we are wrong, move us down the path of truth-telling and repentance. When we need healing, sustain us with your love and hope. When we cannot see beyond ourselves, move us beyond arbitrary borders. Bless us with the Holy Spirit, that the good news may be for us a beginning. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering. Comfort the afflicted. Shield the joyous. And all for your love's sake. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, and keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We join in our closing song, hymn number 250, the song of Zechariah. Blessed be the God of Israel, who comes to set us free and raises up new hope for us, a branch from David's tree. So have the prophets long declared that with a mighty arm God would turn back our enemies and all who wish us harm. With promised mercy will God still the covenant recall. The oath once sworn to Abraham from foes to save us all. That we might worship without fear and offer lives of praise in holiness and righteousness to serve God all our days. My child, as prophet of the Lord, you will prepare the way to tell God's people they are saved from sin's eternal sway. 
Then shall God's mercy from on high shine forth and never cease to drive away the gloom of death and lead us into peace.